it's always important to be learning. In this video, I'm gonna share something that I've learned this year. I've made other videos where I'm taming the jungle and, and sort of reclaiming land from invasives. And so I wanna talk specifically about a particular invasive species in this video. Behind me is a beautiful maple tree. It looks like a sugar maple, but is it? The answer is no. Let's take a closer look. This tree here is about eight inches in diameter at the base. And when you look at that trunk, it really looks pretty much just like what you would expect for a sugar maple until you see that leaf there. And then when we step back, I just want to show you up into this tree a little bit. You can see there's a whole bunch of seed clusters hanging here. And this tree has leaves that, again, look quite a bit like a sugar maple, but those seeds don't. And so what we'll try and do now is kind of look up close at a comparison so you can see some of the distinctions between how this tree looks and a sugar maple tree looks. This is actually Norway maple, which is an invasive species here in the US. It grows very, very well. In fact, this tree was attacked by bittersweet and I had cut these vines at the base thinking this was a sugar maple and that I was gonna save it. It turns out it's a Norway maple, it's invasive and it's gotta go because these Norways grow very, very well. They tend to grow quickly and they shade out other trees in the process. And so this has got to go because they're spreading in a pretty prolific manner. There were two across the street by the garage. I'm kind of in the midway part of our property with the fields in the back. And it turns out there's even some of these down by the lower field. So that's an issue. Here's a comparison of the leaves and the seeds for the sugar maple and the Norway maple. We have the sugar maple here on the left where the seeds hang down in a more vertical direction and the leaf has five nodes. One, two, three, four, and five. Over here, the Norway maple, the seeds are in a more horizontal direction. And again, this hangs from the tree like this where that stem goes up to the tree. And then the leaves can have between five and seven nodes. And if we notice here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven nodes here on this leaf. So that's the big difference. Otherwise, they're very, very similar in size, pretty similar in shape, but the seeds are clearly different. And then the number of nodes on the leaf can be different. The easiest way I've found to identify Norway maple is by snapping the leaf stems and you get this milky white sap substance that comes out of a Norway maple leaf stem when it's broken off. With a sugar maple, there is only a clear sap liquid. Here's the contrast. We have the Norway maple leaf stem on the left and the sugar maple on the right that white milky substance versus clear sap. When it comes to the bark, when the trees are young, they actually look very similar, but this is a more mature Norway maple piece that's been cut into firewood. And the bark is less coarse or less rough than sugar maple. And it's got sort of finer ribs or, or vertical ridges in the pattern compared to sugar maple. This is the bark on a mature sugar maple tree, much rougher and coarser than on the Norway maple. So with this Norway, the bark is just starting to get its creasing and you can kind of see that finer pattern compared to that rough sugar maple. Here's another sugar, not quite as old as that other tree that I showed but you can start to see the, the roughness and the coarseness and the shagginess of the bark developing here. And as we look at a sugar maple sapling, they do start with a smooth bark. And when they're at this stage, 
it's pretty difficult to tell the difference, although I'm learning that there's some differences in coloration that are kind of the giveaway. I'll try and show that. The entire area down here by the lower field where I'm now standing was overgrown with invasives. I took the brush hog through here and opened all of this up. And there aren't too many trees around here. However, there's a maple there and there's a cluster of maples back there. And this whole area ultimately was that jungle brush, thorny disaster. And I was working on taking this back and getting it under control so that we could get the invasives out and get good native species and trees actually growing in here. And I thought, well, for the few maples that are growing in here, let's clear out around them and help them grow. Well, guess what? What kind of maple is gonna grow through a thick thicket like that? Turns out, not sugar maples. And there are two red maples in here, but those others are Norway. And I'll show you again how I know and some differences looking at a sapling size tree. So here is the first one. You can see we even had some bittersweet attacking this one or going up this one. But as we get close, you know, you think it's a, a good maple and then you look at the leaf and it still looks okay, right? Except we've got that extra little node down there on each side of the leaf. So we say, uh-oh. Then we snap the leaf off. Up. Uh, and we've got that milky white at the end of the stem and that's when I know for sure we're dealing with Norway. But let's take a look at the bark. And I've got a piece of sugar maple that I'm going to bring over and stick next to this for comparison. So these two stems are fairly similar in size. This is the sugar maple here. This is that Norway maple tree. You can already see a little bit of definition in terms of the grooves that are going to be in that bark. Whereas the sugar maple is still quite smooth at this young age and size. The other thing is there's a difference in the coloration. There's more tan or grayish greenish brown to the Norway maple bark. Whereas the sugar maple is a lot more gray or silvery gray in the bark. And again, it is smoother given this particular size tree. This is another Norway. The leaves are quite a bit smaller. You can see that relative to my hand, but again, we've got those extra nodes. If we snap that, milky white. And as we look at that bark, it's got more of that tannish color, and we can sort of see some of the definition in there for those fine ribs. So that cluster there of a couple trunks is Norway, and there's another one just off to the left as well. So again, these Norways are invasive because they grow uh, where other native species can't and they grow better than those native species and just shade them out. So unfortunately these trees down here which I thought were going to be good to uh, keep around actually need to get cut down and there are a few others that I've found around the property as well. So I'm looking really carefully for these Norways so that I can get rid of them before they get to the age where they're actually seeding. That big one up uh, closer to the house that I began the video with has already got seeds on it and so that one is potentially one of the sources for down here. I don't really know where the rest came from. The biggest Norways were actually across the street where the logging was done and so it's a little surprising to see that uh, they've spread this far. So I don't know if there's another source or another tree I haven't found yet, but nonetheless, something to be very, very aware of in terms of maintaining woodlands and rooting out invasive species. So to sum up, certainly the Norway maple is a beautiful tree. Unfortunately, it is invasive here in New Hampshire in the United States. It's pretty well disguised in terms of looking very similar to our native sugar maple which of course is a species to be protected and supported and promoted so it's something to really look out for and i'm finding myself identifying these and trying to cut them out as soon as i locate them just so that i can support the growth of those native species rather than the spread of these invasive species that easily take over and outgrow the native trees. So this video hopefully gives you an idea about identifying the Norway maple. And of course, if you do have Norway maple, 
and you are here in the northeast of the US, best bet is probably just to get that tree removed so that it's not seeding and spreading itself throughout the area.